In the spring of 2002, I found myself in the basement of a mental hospital in Vienna, Austria. I was surrounded by shelves lined with human brains. I have never made a film outside of America before, but I was drawn to this story of atrocities committed against children. A few weeks before, I had read on the internet that the city of Vienna was burying the brains of over 700 children. The children had been killed six decades ago because they were mentally or physically handicapped, but their brains had been preserved until now. I was also disturbed to learn that one of the alleged killers of these children, Dr. Heinrich Gross, was still living in Vienna and receiving a pension from the Austrian government. I came to this funeral from New York to learn why it has taken so long to bury these brains. I also wanted to understand why Dr. Gross was never punished for these alleged murders. As a young man, I studied German in school and was obsessed with the brutality of the Holocaust so this trip seemed like a unique opportunity to confront someone directly involved in this history. Wer solche Wesen gesehen hat, der wird wohl nicht mehr behaupten können, dass die Verhinderung zur Entstehung solcher Wesen nicht human wäre. Wenn wir verhindern, dass solche Zerrbilder menschlichen Geistes und menschlicher Gestalt sich in Zukunft verdoppeln und verdreifachen, dann haben wir damit eine Großtat getan, die uns einst Kinder und Kindeskinder danken werden. The killings in Vienna grew out of a worldwide pseudo-scientific movement called eugenics, which sought to create a more perfect race of humans through selective breeding. A number of countries adopted forced sterilization programs for their physically and mentally handicapped citizens. The Nazis were not satisfied with mere sterilization. They began to experiment upon and kill people they deemed unworthy of life. Some historians consider this so-called euthanasia program to be the opening act of the Holocaust as it acclimated the people of Nazi Germany to the systematic murder of their fellow citizens, paving the way for Hitler's final solution. A few days before the funeral, we joined a group of international journalists. We were given an official tour of the psychiatric hospital that was once the home of Vienna's killing program. My crew and I were the only Americans. Spiegelgrund was a very innovative mental hospital, uh, but uh, during the time of the Second World War, things changed that became Spiegelgrund children, euthanasia wards. And, well, for a few years it didn't have the best reputation, I have to say. Um, now it's a normal mental hospital again. The pavilion in front left, it's ward number 15, so those who want to get out, you're very welcome to do so. Our first stop was one of the pavilions where the children had been experimented upon and murdered. There were over 20 killing wards like this one throughout the Third Reich in which an estimated 5,000 handicapped children perished. Joining us on the hospital tour was Dr. Michael Hubenstorf, well, it's up to you. Just ask. a medical historian from the University of Vienna. Dr. Hubenstorf would turn out to be very helpful throughout my journey. It's uh, uh -huh. down here. Uh -huh. uh, you see the church. <laughs> you see the three doors here. And over there are the the two pavillons where the uh, killing and diagnosing took place. That's the place. And are we going to go see that? No, we are going to the church. Uh, I don't know why, but 
<laughs> so uh, it, now we are going to restore the church until summer 2005. Sometimes I take the perspective of a journalist and say, well, I want to see the place. I want to see the spot where that happened. Uh, or uh, where is the sh what was the research done? Yeah. Uh, or where did the pathologists work? Uh, yeah. Things like that. We're seeing the church. Looks like half a lemon, and therefore they call it the lemon. So we're going down to the bachelor chief. It's the behavior of Mr. Keibling throughout all the years. He behaves like that. Why do you think that is? Um, what do you call that? Um, side tracking. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not, not a representative of this institution. I told you so. This was the chapel here in former times, before the funeral starts, before they brought the uh, dead people to the cemetery. It was the celebration here. But now it's uh, used for the pathology and also for the farewell, say, for all confessions here. It seemed like they wanted to show us everything except the places that were most relevant to the story. What we really wanted to see was the room where the brains were kept. After we pestered Dr. Keiblinger and the other hospital officials, a phone call was made, and we were finally granted a brief visit to the brain room. I now understood why the hospital wanted to keep us out of the brain room. Knowing that these handicapped children were murdered is bad enough, but seeing firsthand how Dr. Gross and his colleagues removed their brains for research purposes was truly disturbing. Look at that. What? Gemüse, Schuss und groß und klein. This is, these are glasses vegetables. for your use for vegetable, uh, you know, conservation. So you have big ones, like when you want to make sour pickles. So you have this. That's what is written here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see here, born 36, dead in 42. She was six years old. Now the clinic diagnosis, epilepsy, epileptic. Here, yeah, she was born dead. Three months old. They simply killed him. She's old, four years old. Mongoloid idiocy. But it doesn't give the cause of death. You do not die a natural death of mongoloid idiocy. In one glass, there was the head of a child of one and a half years or something. Complete. It was really like what out of a bad dream. They killed them to experiment with them, and they kept them until now. The perpetrator of the, was the leading psychiatrist, the most famous forensic psychiatrist in Austria. He's here in Vienna. You should make every effort to get at least a few minutes with Heinrich Gross. I had heard that Dr. Gross was living in seclusion. Although he hadn't given an interview in years, I still wanted to speak with him. I had so many questions. How could he have done this? How did he keep his past a secret for so long? Were the allegations even true? Heinrich Gross started his medical career uh, just at the beginning of the uh, Nazi period in Austria. So he finished his medical studies in 1939. Uh, before that, as a student, uh, even uh, as in high school, he had uh, been a member of various Nazi organizations back in his school days already. Then he went through a short process of uh, working at several hospitals, a psychiatric hospital outside Vienna, uh, a general hospital here in Vienna, um, and then uh, came to the institution called Spiegelgrund and he became one of the leading doctors in this killing program.
Dr. Gross was a young doctor, as many young medicines um, uh, took the opportunity the Nazis gave them to go beyond uh, everything that was allowed. So here he was working, diagnosing these children, diagnosing them uh, being idiots, being not able to live uh, without help or things like that. And then from Berlin there came the allowance to kill these children. The children died on a mixture of starvation, being cold, and overdoses of medication. We know that they had taken the brain out of their heads. That was in hundreds of cases where we have his signature on the death certificates. Also der Pavillon 17 ist, so wie ich immer sage, der Vorhof zur Hölle gewesen. Sind die Kinder hergebracht worden, dort sind die ersten Untersuchungen gemacht worden. Dort sind zum Beispiel ähm, Untersuchungen gemacht worden, Schädelröntgen, dass den Kindern Gehirnflüssigkeit entnommen worden ist, ähm, Luft in den Kopf gepumpt worden ist mit einer Sprit Injektionsspritze. Bei diesem Schädelröntgen sind einige Kinder gestorben. Zum einen, weil die Kinder sich bewegt haben und die Nadel von der Spritze abgebrochen ist oder weil die Ärzte zu viel Luft in das Gehirn reingepumpt haben und dann einfach die Kinder ähm, also an dem Schock praktisch gestorben sind. Für sie waren diese Kinder nur Material. Für sie waren diese Kinder wirklich nur wissenschaftliche Profilierungsmöglichkeiten. Sie haben auf Kosten dieser Kinder, auf Kosten des Lebens dieser Kinder sozusagen ähm, eine große wissenschaftliche Karriere gestartet. After the war, the Cold War already had started between uh, the Soviet Union and the United States and um, the, the position um, to bring Nazis and people like him to court, you know, the, it went down. Um, it wasn't so important any, anymore. He's taken to court in 1950 and the case is dropped and he can return to his old profession. Not only that, but he started working with the brains of these children that had been murdered through the Nazi times. Being a Nazi wasn't anything special in Austria. There were so many of them um, that, with, uh, that after 45, they spread in all kinds of, of, of uh, niches of, of, of society. It was not so astonishing to me that Dr. Gross had evaded justice after the war, but I was shocked to learn that he continued to experiment on his victims' brains for decades, possibly well into the 1990s, at the very same hospital where the children were killed. My journalist colleagues and I were invited to a discussion of the hospital's history. It almost seemed like the institution was trying to put a positive spin on these gruesome events. Excuse me, how was this possible from the human medical point of view to continue still for a number of years with experiments on the heads and brains of children who were killed, murdered during the Nazi period? Well, I should say, uh, this is a common practice, or has been a common practice in German-speaking countries. Of course, they don't kill patients today, 
but the practice is still going on. They wait until they die from natural causes mm -hmm. and then study the brain specimens. What those people did was, okay, let's, let's push the process, let's kill the patients and then use the brain specimens. You have no problem with this? You yourself is a... I have a problem with that, yes, of course. I protested against that in 1979. Uh, I'm a different generation, but I should tell you, Dr. Heinrich Gross was successful in bringing his papers into, into the international world. Gross said, we have the largest collection of brain specimens in the world uh, to research on brain malformations. Uh, so we can document that, we can uh, provide data for international science. That's why we are doing that. This is a quote, I'm paraphrasing that. It's not my explanation. That comes from him. Now, the main concern is really not what happened during the Nazi period, but how was it possible that Gross continue to function in this hospital until his retirement and beyond. Way which to my mind is is in a way even more significant than the heinous crimes he committed in the forties. We learned that Dr. Gross was living in a small town in the suburbs of Vienna. This is the house. So you want to be right here? I brought a neurologist friend of mine, Dr. Dan Luciano, along on the trip in the hope that Dr. Gross might be more willing to speak to a fellow brain researcher. Perhaps if we focused the conversation on the nature of his research, Dr. Gross would grant us an interview. We've got to make sure you cannot see any. Hello, Dr. Do you buy that in the tie? Yeah, mm. it's a little, higher. a little obvious. There we go. Yeah, like that. Okay. All right, good. Let's go. Is that at number fourteen? Yeah. The only house in the neighborhood with barbed wire is Dr. Gross's house. Yep. Gotta press the button. Not here. There's like a week's worth of mail in here. This is not a good sign. No. That house is Leah. This is Leah, yeah. And where wohnt, uh, where hat dahin gewohnt? Da hat zwei alte, uh, altes Ehepaar gewohnt, die sind beide schon gestorben. Oh, well. What did he say? He said the people who lived here are dead and it's empty now. But he said Dr. Gross didn't live here. Friedrich Almeida, vier Jahre. Margot Fischbeck, acht Jahre. Johanna Schmid, drei Jahre. Franz Robert, ein Jahr. Günther Mann, sieben Monate. Helga Nieber, zwölf Jahre. Elisabeth Strassmeier, sechs Jahre. Irmgard Harder, zehn Jahre. Helmut Spitzkopf, zwei Jahre. Lene Schodel, zehn Jahre. Dr. Gross and his colleagues had overseen the killings of over 700 children. Some of the brains had been cut into so many pieces that the process of identifying and preparing each child's brain for the funeral was a huge endeavor. I asked to meet the lab technician who was in charge of this difficult task. His name was Robert Weiss, and he allowed our crew to return to the brain room without supervision from the hospital administration. Präparaten Teile, womit sie beerdigt wurden. In solchen Säckchen wurden sie verpackt, auch die Schnitte, auch die Paraffine, und wurden dann hier in diese Urne hineingelegt und die Urne wurde dann verschlossen.
wenn man einem die, die Chance gibt, glaube ich, da mitzuarbeiten ja, und das wirklich kennenzulernen, dann denkt man ganz anders. Und heute fühle ich mich mit den Angehörigen irrsinnig verbunden. Und es war mir, ich war auch auf dieser Beerdigung für die Angehörigen, wurde ich eingeladen, ich müsste unbedingt dabei sein und ich habe so irrsinnig viel Anerkennung bekommen von den Angehörigen, die sicherlich sehr Schwieriges durchgemacht haben. Aber trotzdem haben sie diese Arbeit irrsinnig gewürdigt, die ich da gemacht habe. Und das war wunderschön. I was impressed by Mr. Weiss's sincerity. It was clearly a personal mission for him to ensure that the victims would be buried with as much dignity as possible. I felt like there was more that he wanted to tell us, but couldn't. Then he left, leaving us behind. Right now, I'm just blown away by the fact that we've been left alone in the, in the brain room. Somehow we've managed to get in here alone. She was born March 26, 1936, and killed November 29, 1942. It just blows me away the stuff is still here, you know. And the fact, well, this is the real find. This is the real room that we weren't allowed to go into, but somehow we've ended up alone without any supervision in the back room. It's amazing to see just how many pieces of brains are lying around here. Got slides in there. These are all little pieces of brains. Franz Kohli, 17 Jahre, Karl Eschek, 16 Jahre. I felt that Mr. Weiss was trying to tell me that despite the very public funeral, privately, this nation still had not really come to terms with its history. Österreich nimmt heute Abschied von Hunderten von Kindern, die der menschenverachtenden Ideologie des Nationalsozialismus zum Opfer gefallen sind. Diese dunkle Seite unserer Geschichte muss uns stets gegenwärtig bleiben, dass nämlich der Mantel des Schweigens über die damaligen Ereignisse gebreitet wird, gebreitet bleibt. With the nation focusing on the victims, I was surprised to learn that there were also survivors. Because of Austria's denial of its own Nazi past, it had taken over 50 years for these people to receive any compensation for their suffering. I was also shocked to discover that many of the survivors were not mentally or physically handicapped. Stretching their laws of eugenics, the Nazis labeled so-called antisocial behavior as a hereditary disease. So we have a bit of Ich bin ein ehrliches Kind, aber trotzdem ein Findelkind. Man hat mich ausgesetzt, hat mich dann vor den Pflegeplatz wegen Verwahrlosung und schwere Misshandlungen auf die Küste gegeben, auf die Übernahmstelle. Von dort war ich dann 20 Monate am Spielgrund. Wir waren alle durch die Bank, durch psychische Belastungen, Angst, Härte, Strafen, Sadismus, waren wir eigentlich alle durch die Bank Bettnässer. Man hat uns die Leintücher über den Kopf geschlagen und man hat mal Minus geraden müssen. Auf Steinböden stehen, so wie man, dass man beide Zehen abgefroren sind. Und mit diesen Zehen musste ich die Spaziergänge, ohne dass ich Schuhe ansehen konnte, musste ich mindestens. Ich bin bestraft worden, weil ich mir gesagt habe, ich habe Hunger. Da hat man mir das reingepanzt. Der Mann hat das nicht vertragen, ich habe es wieder erbrochen. Man hat mir das Erbrochene wieder reingepampft, man hat den Teller am Boden geschlagen und man musste das auflecken. Und wenn das Gesicht voll mit Essen war oder mit den Erbrochenen, hat man uns den Kopf in die Klomuschel gegeben und hat man das Wasser runtergelassen. Und das war die Gesichtswäsche. Ähm, ich hätte eine Frage zur ähm, Bestattungszeremonie am Sonntag. Ich würde gerne wissen, welche Bedeutung für Sie diese Zeremonie hat, mit welchen Gefühlen Sie auf diese Zeremonie am Sonntag zugehen. Ich gehe mit einem großen Schmerz hin, denn es ist auch eine Cousine von mir, 
am Spiegelgrund als Opfer der Euthanasie verstorben und mit einem großen Zorn, dass man diesen Mann, der ihr auch so viel Leid, dass ich aus Akten jetzt erfahren dürfte, nicht verurteilt. To make his career gross, there's something that a lot of Austrians did at that time. He becomes a member of the Social Democrat Party, the Socialist Party, then called the Socialist Party. Why? Because he wants to stay in Vienna, and Vienna was dominated by the Socialists. Through those connections, he got one job after the other. So he was helped under the ladder of climbing a ladder in the, in the medical career. Beginning of the 60s, Gross becomes a court examiner. He is an expert at court, being asked by the judge at all and or a lawyer uh, if he can, if if the accused um, is able to to stand the trial and if he is uh, uh, well his mental constitution. Das es hat mit Sicherheit sehr viele auch innerhalb der Justiz gegeben, die einem doch sehr stark belasteten Nationalsozialisten nicht unfreundlich entgegengestanden sind, weil sie selbst mit dieser Geschichte als Personen teilweise zu tun hatten. Hohes Geschworenengericht, wir sind aufgrund unserer Untersuchungen zu folgendem Ergebnis gelangt. Der Angeklagte ist zweifellos nicht geisteskrank. In 1980, he claims to have uh, produced 12.000 court examinations, appraisals, which means uh, beginning at the, uh, uh, at the beginning of the 60s, which amounts to 600 of these appraisals a year, and that's about two a working day. Now you don't go, <laughs> you can't examine two people a day and produce the report on that. So what you do is you have standard um, sound bites you use to put into this report. And uh, lawyers and judges um, um, appreciated his work very much because he, as one lawyer told me, knew exactly what you want to hear. I started asking some judges there. And I, I asked them, you know about his past. How can you have him as an expert at court? And one of them told me, you know, he's working fast. And, and he, yeah, he's working fast, and that's what we want. Heinrich Gross was honored with this honorary cross for arts and science from the government. He was a very prominent figure. You could read about him all the time in the newspapers. He got a, an institute for uh, the study of brain malformations, um, supported by the Ludwig Portsman Society for uh, science funding, which is a very prominent society of science funding in Austria, named after a uh, Jewish uh, physicist. He got people working for him, sometimes eight, ten people working with him on these brains. Um, he made dozens of publications saying, um, we have the biggest um, um, part of brains all over the world of handicapped people or children. Now, if you go through Gross's files and his publications, he actually states where the corpses came from, when the patients died. So when it said specimen from patients died November 43, it was obvious what he was doing, where he had got the brains from. The brains were there all the time. You could openly see that and no one noticed what the background was or no one wanted to raise the, uh, the issue uh, or, or say anything about it. There's a tendency now to say, well, we all didn't know about it, did we? Uh, that's what the officials say uh, in the city council. That's what his colleagues say. Um, that's what his, his uh, members in the party say. It means no medals for murder because Dr. Heinrich Gross, the man who killed many children in, in the Nazi time, uh, can every day go to and see the coffee, coffee house and, is, and has a medal from Austria. 
The city of Vienna invited my journalist colleagues and I to the mayor's office for wine and cheese and speeches. It all seemed a little strange given the circumstances under which we all had come to Vienna. I wanted to see how the mayor would reconcile Dr. Gross's Medal of Honor and government pension with the events of this week. Was wir wollen heute tun wollen ist so wie in vielen anderen Bereichen auch im eigenen Bereich und der Parteivorsitzende der SPÖ hat davon ja auch gesprochen mit den braunen Flecken der SPÖ aufarbeiten, die aufarbeiten schonungslos auch darlegen und uns auch dafür zu entschuldigen, dass es möglich war, dass Leute wie Gross Mitglieder der Sozialdemokratischen Partei wurden. Austrians always present themselves as the victims of Nazism. Well, it's, it should be a known fact that the Austrians were not only the victors, they, they, they embraced Hitler by a majority. And they were his most enthusiastic followers. In 1938, Hitler marched into Austria. Here in Vienna, the Austrians enthusiastically accept Hitler. In it all, let the Zukunft der Nation und des Deutschen Reich. The Germans tried to come to grips with the past, with this terrible past, and the Austrians tried to evade to come to, to, to grips with it past. They are not sincere. They present their beliefs with their mouth, but they do not do as they promised to do. Well, Mr. Gross, Gross should be uh, put in jail to clear the history, to, to clear the facts, to know how it happened, and this could be done in a trial. There seemed to be so much regret about the horrors perpetrated by Dr. Gross that I wondered why no one had spoken out against him in all of these years. As it turned out, someone had tried to confront him over 20 years ago. Die von den Mördern zu medizinischen Präparaten herabgewürdigten Kinder sollten betrauert und begraben werden. Es sollte gegen die Die Geschichte zwischen mir und Dr. Gross gibt es seit dem Jahre 1979, also 23 Jahre. Sie entstand dadurch, dass wir damals eine Gruppe von Ärzten, Sozialwissenschaftlern waren, die also auch Forschungsarbeiten gemacht haben. Und wir wussten, dass der Psychiater Gross während der Nazizeit eine unrühmliche Rolle hier am Spiegelgrund gespielt hat, dass er ein Euthanasiearzt war und dass er Schuld auf sich geladen hatte. Werner Vogt, who attacked uh, this guy, Heinrich Gross, publishing a leaflet, making certain things known in public, giving an interview to the press and speaking out. That was the attack. Uh, now, it would have been left at that or maybe some public debate uh, if uh, Dr. Gross wouldn't have decided to take Werner Vogt to the courts. Dr. Gross sued Werner Vogt for libel, claiming that he was not a mass murderer of children. Gross lost the case on appeal, and the court ruled that Vogt's accusations were not libelous because they were in fact true. They said, oh, implicitly, that actually Henry Gross committed the crimes. So already then, this was a starting point for the courts to investigate further and take up the whole issue again from where it was in 1950. Jetzt dachten wir, jetzt wird ein Staatsanwalt kommen und wird Gross anklagen. Hat er aber nicht gemacht. Ja? Wir dachten, er wird als Arzt seinen Beruf verlieren, weil die Der ärztliche Stand wird sagen, den wollen wir nicht. Ist aber nicht geschehen. Wir dachten, er wird als Gutachter für die Justiz nicht mehr tragbar sein. Ist aber nicht geschehen. Wir dachten, er wird jetzt sofort sein wissenschaftliches Institut verlieren. Die Justiz hat nicht gehandelt. And of course, Heinrich Gross at the same time was one of the key forensic experts. The Ministry of Justice would, have, would, would be in the situation of uh, making their state attorney uh, the so, uh, well take someone to the courts who is an expert for the ministry. Gross wasn't taken to court uh, because he was a colleague of a lot of people 
in the in the system a colleague of, of the lawyers a colleague of the judges and it's hard to take a friend or a colleague to court es gab offensichtlich eine 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 geheime abmachung uh, dass gegen den gross nichts unternommen wird man wollte am thema nationalsozialismus und medizin in österreich nichts rütteln man wollte das nicht zur sprache bringen alle wollten verhindern dass über dieses thema weiterhin etwas gesagt oder getan wird Entschuldigung, wir suchen uh, Dr. Gross, Dr. Heinrich Gross. Ist das der Herz von Gross? Uh, wir wollen mit Dr. Gross sprechen. Er wohnt nicht hier. Er wohnt nicht hier? Nein. Uh, Pension. Pension. Dr. Gross. Da unten? Mm -hmm. Well, evidently, Gross lives in the hotel down the street. Ja, yeah, hello, hello. Ja, wir suchen jemanden, der hier wohnt wahrscheinlich. Ja. Ein Dr. Gross. Wir haben gehört, dass er wohnt hier. Ja. Ist er da? Das weiß ich nicht. Wenn ich Sie suche, Moment, ich komme. Danke. Ja, grüß, grüß Gott. Gott. Die, die Name ist Herr Berlinger. Ja, bitte ja, ich, schön. Äh, ja, ich bin aus New York gekommen und ich wollte ein, ein Interview mit Dr. Gross machen. Ich habe gehört, dass er hier wohnt. Nein. Nein? Nein. Uh, ich, wir wissen, dass es einen Herrn Dr. Groß gibt, der heißt so wie wir, aber wir sind weder verwandt noch bekannt <lacht> noch sonst was mit ihm. Hi, ja. Marie Fellner, zwei Jahre. Marie Schier, zwölf Jahre. Die Geschichte zum Spiegelgrund fängt damit an, dass im Jahre 1940 wir eine neue Lehrkraft bekamen, denn ich bin ein Kind von einer Zeugin Jehova. Sie stellte mich in der Schule zur Rede, warum ich nicht den Hitlergruß leiste. Und meine Antwort war darauf, er ist ein Mensch und von einem Menschen kann kein Heil kommen. Diese kurzen Dinge genügten ihr, um eine Anzeige gegen uns zu erstatten. Und so kam ich auf diesen berüchtigten Spielgrund. Zehn Jahre. Ja, das ist meine Cousine, die am Spielgrund umgekommen ist. Johann Schatzkopf, sieben Jahre. Wie ist dieser Eugenie zum Opfer gefallen? Franz Mandel, zwei Jahre. Kurz Karda, 13 Jahre. Elfriede Swoboda, 13 Jahre. Caroline Geta, 4 Jahre. Anna Becker, 15 Jahre. After the fall of the Berlin Wall, the archives of the East German State Security Police, known as the Stasi, were opened up. The archives contain thousands of official documents and shed new light on the Nazi era. Dr. Gross was still working as a court expert at the time the files were opened. It was in 1995. I, I wrote that story that there's new evidence against Gross found in the former Stasi archives in, in Eastern Berlin. And this paper said in 1944 when he was on, va on vacation as a soldier, he went back to the clinic doing this work again. And they wanted him to get special money because he was so successful in killing children. Doing Reichsausschussarbeit was that. So the, the chief of the clinic wrote to Berlin, Hitler's Reichskanzlei saying, um, Gross and, and, and different other people have been so doing their work so good, please uh, let them have extra money. And I saw that and I thought, that is new evidence. That is the chance to, to bring him to court. I personally sent this new information and the document to the prosecutor. So they knew what, what was on the table now. And um, they, um, they um, went uh, forward and backward. And, and after some, some months, uh, the prosecutor said, no, for me, this case is not to be opened again. But the story was picked up by the media. 
And in the year 2000, after five years of pressure, Dr. Gross was finally taken to court. It was a complete farce. Because knowing uh, that, that Gross uh, is, has very bad hearing, and uh, having him sitting quite, quite far apart of, 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 of the church, asking him, Mr. Gross, do you hear me? And he then, uh -huh, okay, I can hear you. Do you understand what I say? Also, er spielt Katz und Maus mit der Justiz und die Justiz lässt mit sich Katz und Maus spielen. Sie hat kein besonderes Interesse, diesen Fall zu kehren, sondern am liebsten wäre es ihr, äh, mit dem Tod des Dr. Gross wäre die Sache erledigt. Now, of course, Gross is not convicted and, and the case, uh, court case was dropped. The reason was that Gross was thought to be not able to stand trial, being too senile and too fragile. If we want to be naughty, we could say, well, who, if not Gross, knows how to act in front of a uh, medical examiner so that he can write a report um, uh, labeling Gross as not able to stand in front of court. Immediately after the charges against him were dropped, Dr. Gross and his lawyer went to a nearby coffee house where Gross gave a television interview to a local news crew. He certainly appeared frail, but he also seemed capable of answering questions. Your Anwalt had said that it would be better if the process durchgeführt worden wäre. Ich glaube, man könnte mir nichts nachweisen. Ne? Können Sie sich noch erinnern, was ist denn 1944 am Spielgrund vorgefallen? Ich kann mich nicht mehr erinnern. Aber Sie wissen, dass Sie dort Arzt waren? Ja, das weiß ich schon. Und welche Kinder waren denn dort? Zum Teil Erziehungsschwierige, zum Teil heißt es Schwache. Und es gibt eben so Vorwürfe, dass, dass die Kinder dort auch ermordet wurden. Also was, was können Sie, an was können Sie sich da noch erinnern? Ich kann mich nicht mehr erinnern. Da. Ich kann mich nicht mehr erinnern an die Zeit. Das ist ja immer schon 50, 60 Jahre zurückliegend. Ne? Ich war in seiner sogenannten Behandlung und Anführungszeichen in den Jahren 1941, 42 und 43. In den Unterarmen sogenannte Speibinektionen geben. Da benieht man 24 Stunden bei der Klomuschel. Und die strengere Art noch, die länger spürbar war, das hat sich genannt Schwefelkur. Das waren Injektionen in die Oberschenkel, auch wieder von diesem Doktor Groß bekommen. Und da bin ich oft 14 Tage nur auf den Händen herumgerochen im Keller, weil ich nicht einmal stehen habe können. War dort meistens natürlich auch in einer Einzelzelle. Also wir waren dort eigentlich wie Tiere gehalten. Heute noch ist dieses Gefühl im Hinterkopf noch vorhanden, wenn man den Ausdruck hört, minderwertig, asozial. Ich habe mein ganzes Leben gearbeitet, habe zwei gut erzogene Söhne, aber irgendwo im Hinterkopf bleibt dieser Begriff immer noch hängen. I still hadn't had any success in locating Dr. Gross but I was granted an interview with Nicholas Lehner, his attorney in the 2000 proceedings. Regrets. Regrets. Bedauerns. Kann bedauern. Haben Sie irgendwelche Bedauern, dass Sie dieses Anfall annimmt? Oder? Angenommen habe. Wie gesagt, noch einmal, dass ja kein Missverständnis ist. Ich war nie und bin umso weniger jetzt ein Nationalsozialist, sondern ich bin ein Profi. Ich hätte einen Juden und einen Kommunisten auch verteidigt, wenn er mal sympathisch ist und wenn die Sache interessant gewesen wäre vom allgemeinen Hintergrund. Wie war es für Sie, jemanden zu verteidigen, der etwas so Grauenhaftes gemacht hat? 
wenn ich so zurückdenke und die maßlosen und unobjektiven Angriffe in den Medien, die unbewiesenen, es ist behauptet worden, er ist ein Mörder, nur in der heutigen Zeit stellt er das ein Gericht fest und nicht ein Medium, hat er mir Leid getan, weil ich mir gedacht habe, wenn das Gericht das feststellt und ich verliere den Prozess, okay, dann wissen die Opfer, er ist der Mörder. Aber sagen, solange das Gericht das nicht festgestellt hat, ist er nach der Unschuldsvermutung auf der ganzen Welt, auch in Amerika, einfach unschuldig. Ähm, ich hoffe, dass ich Sie richtig verstehen habe. Es, es scheint, dass Sie glauben, dass er nicht Mörder ist. Also, wenn Primarius Gross mitgemacht hat, wenn dann verurteile ich das, so wie von jedem anderen. I was surprised to find that I really liked Dr. Lehner, and I understood his position as a lawyer. I should have known that I probably wouldn't get much information out of him, but I had hoped that he might get me closer to Dr. Gross. Uh, es ist dann ein Fernsehinterview mit ihm gemacht worden, was ja auch wieder Grundlage dafür war, dass das Gutachter noch einmal bestellt worden ist. Und aufgrund dieser Unruhe in den Medien, weil die Opfer mit Recht gesagt haben, ja, wir haben ihn ja gesehen, der, der kann ja halbwegs reden noch und, und verstehen noch, war dann die Familie des Primarius Gross über mich äh, böse, verärgert, dass ich nicht verhindert habe das. Und deshalb habe ich auch jetzt nicht mehr das Vertrauensverhältnis zur Familie, wie es vorher war. I had so many questions for Dr. Gross. How could a doctor have done such terrible things? Did his research result in anything positive? What did the scientific community in Austria think of his work? The point I'd like to make is, this is, it has all been in the progress of science, for the benefit of science. People made their thesis on these on these experiments. Well, the yeah, yeah. there's hot debate about what the scientific value of those experiments. Uh, of course, it's good for our feelings to say uh, there is no scientific value, this was no scientific program. This serves as well because we say, okay, uh, they are just criminals. But uh, a very renowned neuropathologist tried to document cases of scientific papers that have been based uh, on neuropathological specimens from the Nazi period. And he came up with an enormous number of papers. It sounds like science has progressed, so-called progressed, from these developments in the Second World War. Science has profited from it largely. The might scientists be, working, uh, may, may I finish my sentence? Interest. This is, might be, I don't know, but this is torturing, this is sadistic. It had nothing to do with science. Uh, I agree, but the perspective of those scientists is different. They say, well, with all those specimens, maybe at least they used it for something positive. I was finally getting a chance to see some of Dr. Gross's research materials. Robert Weiss, the technician who had prepared the brains for the funeral, invited me to review the results of Dr. Gross's experimentation on the children that he and his colleagues allegedly killed. Ironically, Weiss was now working in the office that used to belong to Dr. Gross himself. These things are your, from Dr. Gross. Here you can see the child, the small child in the whole. That is the head of the child. That is auch der Kopf des Kindes nach begonnener Präparation der Schädelhaut. Und was hat er gemacht? Äh, da wollte er äh, nur die Weichteile freilegen, um eben das äh, Schädelskelett darzustellen. Der präparierte Kopf, wo man eben ähm, von unten hinein sieht, in die Luftröhren und was war der Zweck dieser Vermessungsarbeiten, reine Vermessungsarbeiten, um zu, messen, um zu messen, was da eben für Veränderungen bei dieser Krankheit äh, vorkommen. 
Und hat diese Arbeit etwas mit dem Spiegelgrund? Das ist ein Spiegelgrundopfer, ja. Das Dr. Gross hat veröffentlicht. Ja, das steht da. Die Leute, die in dieses Buch sind getötet beim Herr Gross, um zu forschen, oder habe ich das missverstanden? Das ist, äh, glaube ich, äh, ein Fall. Er ist im 42er Jahr verstorben. Äh, das heißt, Dr. Gross war zu diesem Zeitpunkt Abteilungsarzt. Gibt es noch Beispiele äh, von ne, Gross Arbeit und Spiegelgrund? Die sollte es geben, denn es sollte angeblich 37 Arbeiten geben vom Dr. Gross, so wie diese hier, ja. wobei er nicht nur Einzelautor ist oder Einzelbearbeiter, äh, ähm, sondern er hat mit, manchmal mit mehreren Leuten zusammengearbeitet. Und die letzte Konsequenz dieses Dings, das letzte Mal wurde gearbeitet an dem, Fall, an dem Spiegelgrundopfern, 1998, das heißt in einer Zeit, wo die Gerichtuntersuchungen äh, schon angelaufen sind, wo die Präparate beschlagnahmt worden sind, äh, wo alles eigentlich brandheiß war, weil es ja eventuell in Ausweitung der, der, Töten, der Tötungsdelikte des Dr. Gross gekommen wäre und dass man da noch hergeht und dann noch immer im, im Geheimen arbeiten tut, obwohl man vielleicht weiß, dass das nicht sehr an Opfern von Spiegelgrund gearbeitet. Was haben Sie da erforscht? Ja, die Ursachen des Schwachsinns des Hochgradigen. Dafür habe ich ja die, die, die Auszeichnung gekriegt. Ja, der ist Ehrenkreis für die Wissenschaft. für Wissenschaft und Kunst. Für, für welche Arbeit haben Sie das bekommen? Was war ja, Ihre wissenschaftliche Erkenntnis? Ich weiß nicht, an verschiedene, ich bin ziemlich viel geschrieben. Wenn Sie jetzt so zurückdenken an, an die Zeit, an die schreckliche Zeit, gibt es da etwas, was Sie bereuen, wo es Ihnen leid tut? Ja, mir tut leid, dass ich überhaupt tut wurde, ne, nach dem ganzen Jahr. On my last day in Vienna, I went to the town hall in the village where Gross supposedly lived. It was a Saturday, but I hoped it would be open so I could look through the town records. Wir suchen um, diese Heinrich Gross, Dr. Gross. Nein, nein, das ist alles geschlossen. Ja. Aber er wohnt auch sicher nicht hier. Er wohnt hier. Also, ich bin jetzt zehn Jahre, zwölf Jahre Bürgermeister hier. Oh, Sie sind Bürgermeister? Ah. Es tut mir leid, dass ich euch gestört habe. Ja, und und ähm, er hat nie hier gewohnt? Also in den letzten 10, 12 Jahren sicher nicht. Sicher nicht. Und keine Verwandten hier? Oder? Also ich weiß nichts davon. Ja. Es ist möglich, ist es schon, aber ich weiß nichts davon. Ja. Hm. Ja, und es ist ein Wiener, soweit ich weiß. Ja. Ja. I later learned that the mayor was a controversial figure in Austria, having made statements supporting Jörg Haider, the far-right politician who many considered to be a neo-Nazi. What is the number for Gross's uh, daughter? Let's see if she'll talk to me this time. I returned to Vienna a few times after the funeral, but had no luck in finding Dr. Gross. I met with politicians, historians, and government officials, but no one offered any concrete answers or got me any closer. I talked with several of his family members, all of whom refused to speak to me on camera. I also spoke with some of his former colleagues, but they refused to be filmed as well. Yeah, is he had kind of interest? Or, uh, One of them said that he would do an interview, but not until Dr. Gross was dead. I met with Robert Weiss again, and he told me that he had lost his job because of the interview he had given me. In March of 2003, 
Austria finally rescinded Gross's honorary medal, but continues to pay him his government pension. The survivors of Spiegelgrund still carry a great deal of anger towards Dr. Gross and the institutions that protected him for so many years. They are now mounting a class action civil suit against him as it becomes clear that a criminal trial will never take place. Now almost 90 years old, Dr. Gross will most likely die before the civil suit ever reaches a courtroom. Walter Berlo, drei Jahre. Josef Brock, fünf Jahre. Günther Fiedel, drei Jahre. Magonas, zwölf Jahre. Ernst Rossenbach, zwölf Jahre. Manfred Fiedel, vier Jahre. Margot Fischbeck, acht Jahre. Johanna Schmid, drei Jahre. Franz Horvath, ein Jahr. Günther Mann, sieben Monate. Helga Nieber, zwölf Jahre. Elisabeth Strassmeier, sechs Jahre. Irmgard Harder, zehn Jahre. Helmut Spitzkopf, zwei Jahre. Ich denke, Frau Dr. Groß, he won. He can have a good pension. A lot of money, everywhere a nice house, and plus then, you won. Johann Leimer, ein Jahr. Rudolf Daubowski, ein Monat. Christine 